Okay, now for question number two from the June 2019 International A-Level paper. Okay, um, here we've got a question about someone called Chi, who wanted to summarize the scores of the 39 competitors in a village quiz. He started to produce the following stem and leaf diagram. So here it says note uh, key 25 is a score of 25. So the stem is the tens and the leaf is the units. That's 11, 15, 18, 19 and so on. He did not complete the stem and leaf diagram but instead produced the following box plot. Okay, so he gave up halfway and then he just did the box plot anyway. So he's got the important details here. Now remember, in, in a box plot, you have five pieces of information, which are, uh, well, sometimes more, but you have the lowest value, the lower quartile, the median, the upper quartile, and the highest value. You also have um, information to say whether a value is an outlier or not. If the whisker does not go as far as a particular point, it means it's an outlier. So Chi defined an outlier as a value which is greater than Q3 plus one point. 5 times Q3 minus Q1. So basically, if it's if the distance of a point was greater than the upper quartile plus 1.5 times the width of the box here, which is the difference between the upper and lower quartiles, then it would be an outlier. So of course, there didn't seem to be any outliers on this side, but this was an outlier on that side, because on that side, the outlier is defined as the lower quartile minus 1.5 times the distance between the upper quartile and the lower quartile. So 1.5 times this distance, less than this value, seems like this is outside of that range. Okay, so the question says find the interquartile range and find the range. Now the interquartile range is the difference between the upper quartile and the lower quartile. So this is the upper quartile here. Sorry, this is the lower quartile here, which is called Q1. This is the lower quartile, which seems to be 30, that's 40, that's 10, so that's 3, that's each of them is 1, so that's 33. And the median, which is this value here, Q2, that looks like it's 42. And this is the upper quartile, Q3, which seems like it's 45, 6, 7, 47. So the interquartile range is going to be the difference between the upper quartile and the lower quartile. So it's 47 minus 33, which is 14. That's the interquartile range. Then it says find the range. Now the range is simply the highest entry minus the lowest entry. Okay, so the highest entry is here, 54. And the lowest entry is this number 11, which is an outlier. So 54 minus 11 is going to be 43. 43, that's the, the range. Okay, remember that the lower quartile is the value which is three quarters along okay, the, um, the entries when they're arranged in order of size. The, the median is the entry which is right bang in the middle, okay, halfway point between the lowest uh, between the the entries when they're arranged in order of size the upper quartile is three quarters of the way up along okay the entries when they're arranged according to size anyway so now it says describe giving a reason the skewness of the distribution of the scores okay so now what we can see here is uh, the median is closer to the upper quartile than it is to the lower quartile. So if you were to draw some sort of a, a diagram, it would, it would have this type of shape. Okay, so I like to think of this, this part, which is the part that's elongated, as the tail. If the tail point, points towards the left, it has a negative skew. If it had this type of shape, if this median, okay, which is like, um, if that's closer to the lower quartile than the upper quartile, if it was like this type of shape, if the box had the, the, the median closer to the lower quartile and the upper quartile, then it would be this type of shape, okay, you could say, which the tail points to the right, so it's like positive skew because it's pointing to the right, okay, so that's how I like to, um, um, to deal with this type of question. So we can see that Q3 minus Q2 
is less than Q2 minus Q1. Okay, so you can say Q3 minus Q2 gives you, we'll work out the value so that Q3 is 47 minus 42, which is equal to 5. 47 minus 42, sorry, which is equal to 5. And Q2 minus Q1 is 42 minus, was it 33? 33, yes. 33, which you can see is 9. So therefore, we can say that Q3 minus Q2 is less than Q2 minus Q1. So I, I, the way I like to describe it is Q2 is closer to Q3 than to Q1, therefore positive skew. That's how I describe it. Positive skew. So, oh, sorry, what am I talking about? What did I say in the beginning? I said it's negative skew. This is our situation. I was thinking about the last one. The one I was just, it's just not like this, it's like this, it's how it looks. So it's negative skew because the tail is pointing to the left. It's negative skew, sorry. Okay, so it's negative skew. Okay, negative skew. Okay, negative skew. So excuse my handwriting there, because it looks this kind of shape, right? It's, it's going to have that type of tail pointing that way, so this is negative. Okay, if the tail is pointing the other way, it would be positive. Okay, so that's good enough for part B. Part C. Okay, it says, um, Albert and Beth asked for their scores to be checked. Albert's score was changed from 25 to 37. Beth's score was changed from 54 to 60. On the grid on page 5, which I've just put down here, it says, um, draw an updated box plot, show clearly any calculations you used. Okay, now, Albert's score was changed from 25 to 37. Okay, so the 25 here, became 37, so there's another 37. Okay, so Albert's score went from there to there. Okay, does that affect anything? Yes, it does, because his score now has displaced some numbers inside between the median. Now, does it affect the median? No, the median is 42. So the changes took place before the median started. So they're just number swapping around in this region here, which is in the region of the uh, the area of the lower quartile. The lower quartile will be somewhere in this area here. Okay, this is the, the area which affects the lower quartile. Because it's moved from one side of the lower quartile to the other, so this is Q1, it's moved from one side to the other of it, it's going to displace some numbers. So uh, just to make it kind of a bit clearer for you, just imagine if I, I'm just going to show you um, an example. Supposing I had numbers like 2 and 4 and 6 and 8 and 10, and 12, and 14, and 16. Okay, it's nothing to do with this question. I'll rub it out afterwards, just to sh explain what happens. Supposing, right now we've got these numbers. Um, let's say we just put 18 in there as well. So we have basically 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Okay, so the middle number here is going to be the fifth number. Okay, this number is the median. Okay, all right. So just, just supposing that we had some other numbers here. This was the... This was a median, and this this is the this is for the lower quartile. Okay, we're finding the lower quartile. So these, just say this was the lower quartile, okay? And there were other numbers here, but for for the lower quartile, we're dealing with these numbers in this section here. Now, supposing a number changed from six to say thirteen. So supposing the six became thirteen. So there's no longer a six here. So the six is gone, but now there's a thirteen here. Will this ten still be the lower quartile? It won't, will it? Because in this data, in the lower quartile of the whole data I'm talking about, this, this, this number here, well, to the left of it, there's three values. To the right of it now, there's one, two, three, four, five values. Okay, now what's happened is the lower quartile has to be this number, not this number anymore. Okay, so this, this, the number 10 is still there, but no longer is it the lower quartile. The lower quartile now has become the next number up, which is 12. Okay, because the, thir the 6 that changed to a 13, of course, they have to be in order of size. So it has to go now past between the 12 and the 14 here. So now it's displaced the 10 
it's pushed it along to the left, you could say. So now that 12 has to now be in the middle of these, these sets of data here. So this is in the middle of that first quarter of data, it's going to be the lower quartile then. Okay, so the lower quartile changed from 10 to 12 because the number came from behind and pushed it back. So this 25 that it was before, okay, first of all, the, the, the lower quartile was 33. Okay, 33 was the lower quartile. Now, this 25 was changed to 37. So this 25 now became 37. So now that means this is going to be the new lower quartile. The lower quartile now is going to be 35. Okay, I hope this little example here made you realize because it's basically now, if the 25 becomes a 37, okay, that means there's more numbers to the right of 35 than to the left of 33 than, than to the left of it now. So it won't be in the middle of that part of the data. So it has to, the lower quartile has to move up one space to, to now have the same number of entries to the left and the right of it because the lower quartile member is halfway between the median and the beginning. Okay, so that 35 is now the lower quartile. So the lower quartile now is, is 35. So Q1 has now become 35. But it didn't, this, this particular uh, change did not affect the, the median because all this shifting happened before the median started. Okay, let's see uh, the other change, 54 to 60. So 54 to 60, okay, that doesn't change anything in terms of the upper quartile or the median because all the changes that happened after those took place. So if I change something from 54 to 60, it won't affect these at all. Okay, so that, that Beth, Beth score will, won't change the, the median and the upper quartile. So it seems like Q2, the new Q2 is still 42 and the new Q3 is still um, 47. Okay, so we got those three values. Okay, and the, the lowest value is still 11. Um, and the highest value is now become 60. That's the highest value. Now we've got to look at has it affected our definition of the outliers? We've got to think about the outliers. Okay, so now the outlier, remember, is Q3 plus 1.5 times Q3 minus Q1. Okay, so it's the upper quartile uh, plus 1.5 times the width of this box. Now the width of this box has now changed, hasn't it? The width of the box has now changed because the width of the box now has become uh, 12. Okay, so, so you've got Q3, which is unchanged, so it's 47 plus 1.5 times 12, which is, that's going to be 12 plus 6, 18, 47 plus 18 is 65. Let me just make sure. 47 plus 1.5 times 12, which gives us 65. That's right, so 65 okay is now the limit for the outline so we can see that that 60 that 54 that became 60 is not outline okay so that's fine so that 60 is is fine okay now let's look at the lower limit of the outliers okay for the lower limit of the outliers I'll just move this on fixed it okay I can move this down here for the lower limit of the outliers we're gonna have Q 1 minus 1.5 times Q3 minus Q1, okay, which is equal to, now the lower, the lower quartile has now become 35 instead of 33, minus 1.5, and the width of the box has now become 12 instead of 14, so it might affect, it might include some more outliers, now let's see, so you've got 35 minus 18, 35 minus, that's uh, 12 plus 6, 18. Okay, which is 17. So 17 is now the new limit for the lower quartile. So if we look at the information we have, we see now 15 here. This 15 is now an outlier. So we have two outliers now. So we have an outlier at 11. That's one outlier. We have an outlier at 15. The first entry within the range is 18. So we, uh, I like to do it like that. I like to to start the whisker at the first entry within the acceptable range, which is going to be 18, which is here. So that's where it starts. 
and the lower quartile is 35, which is here. That's the lower quartile. And the median is 42, which is here. That's the median. And the upper quartile is 47 still, which is right here. Okay. And the, the largest value within the range is 60. So we stop here at 60. Okay. That's the largest value that's within the range. Okay. So we're going to have something looking like this and put it straight. Why is that not straight? Okay, and then you have your whiskers going up to here and up to there. Okay, so there we have all the information we need. The calculations they were talking about with these calculations here calculating the outliers. So this is within the acceptable range, so we can stop there. And these two are now outside of the acceptable range, so they are outliers. And the first value inside the acceptable range is 18. Okay, some, some people, they start the whiskers from the point, uh, from the limit. So they might start this at 17 instead of 18, because that's the limit. And they might, start, they might end this at 65, because they, they, they draw it to the limit. But I like to do it up to the you know, the, the first value within the acceptable range. That's where the whisker goes to. Both of them are correct though. Then it says, some of the competitors complained that the questions were biased towards a younger generation. Okay, so the product moment co correlation coefficient between the age of competitors and their score um, in the quiz is minus 0 0.187. Now, if they had the age of the competitors and the score, and it gave you something like um, a straight line, Okay, the PMCC. Okay, there would be like you say, oh, there's negative correlation. That means as the age goes down, okay, as the age goes down, the score goes, the score gets bigger. Okay, or if it was like this, as the age increases, as the age increases, okay, then the score gets uh, smaller. Okay, so it could be like this as the age and the score as the age increases the score gets higher and here as the age increases the score gets lower this is negative correlation this is positive correlation now the pmcc basically is a is a measure of how close together the points are to a straight line so if they're really close to a straight line okay and uh, very close to a straight line which has a negative um, a negative gradient like this then the value of the PMCC will be close to minus one. Okay, the PMCC is given the symbol R. That will be R is when it's when it's approximately minus one, it's very strong negative correlation. When R is close to or is close to positive one, it's very strong positive correlation. Okay, but in this case, R is very close to zero. So it's like almost no correlation. So you can say as R is very close to zero, Okay, therefore, there's very weak correlation between those two quantities, age and score. So we can say that a complaint is not supported. Complaint is not supported. Okay, so there's the answer to that question.